Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, my name is Sabur. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to how Bangladesh became Muslim. Yesterday we did how Indonesia became Muslim. Today we're going to do Bangladesh. So stay tuned. We're going to be starting in uh, with that video in just a couple minutes. Uh, for those of you who are new, thank you very much for coming to my channel. Uh, I upload uh, videos daily. So if you like these kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning notification on. So you're sending a notification when I put out a new video. Um, thank you very much, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the video. Thank you very much again for coming back. Let's get started with how Bangladesh became Muslim. One of Bangladesh's main demographic peculiarities, aside from its great population density, is its condition of being sort of a Muslim enclave to the region. While none of its neighbor countries had Islam as their majoritarian religion, around 90% of Bangladeshi are Muslims. In fact, Bangladesh is the country with the fourth largest Muslim population in the world, almost 150 million. At the same time, Islam has been present in Bangladesh, as well as in most of South Asia, for many centuries as the religion brought by many ruling dynasties and empires. Nonetheless, and except for Pakistan, in no other of these countries has Islam left such a deep mark as in Bangladesh. Why is it then that Islam became Bangladesh's major religion? In answering this question, we shall first inquire how Islam made it to Bangladesh in the first place. The first signs of Islam in the Bengal Delta region, where Bangladesh is located, can be traced down to the times of Mahoma himself and the Arab trade routes. Traders were not necessarily missionaries, but indeed helped in putting Islam on the map when going east, even setting their own communities near trade posts in the south of the Delta. But despite traders being the first Muslims to reach Bengal, Islam would only predominate in the region by conquest. West. Since the beginning of Islam, Muslim conquerors were responsible for a swift expansion process, process that would lead them from the Middle East to go west, to the north of Africa, and up to the Iberian Peninsula and Sicily. But despite their conquests in Western and Central Asia, they were unable to successfully penetrate into the Indian subcontinent for many centuries. Reaching Bengal in particular would take Muslim faith 600 years. The Muslim conquest of India began in the 10th century, concretely with the Samanid military commander Alp Tejin. At the surface of the Samanid Empire, which at the time occupied a large part of the Persian region, Alp Tejin was a slave soldier or Mamluk. Mamluks were common in Muslim warlords' culture, and their army of great importance for Muslim territorial expansion. At the same time, the fact of being slaves didn't mean that they were limited to a life of service as low-rank individuals. There are multiple examples of Mamluks that achieved power positions in the military and political life. This was the case of Alp Tejin. Of Turkish origin but of Persian and Muslim upbringing, he rebelled against the Samanid and formed a kingdom of his own in Ganza, now Afghanistan, in 1962. Alp Tejin died the next year and was succeeded by his son Sabuk Taijin, who became the founder of the Ghazvanid dynasty. The southern Hindu Sahid dynasty was reluctant of a Muslim kingdom so close to their domains and wasted no time in attacking them. The war between these two kingdoms lasted for years. In this conflict, the Sahid dynasty was able to convince his fellow Hindu warlords of the danger of the Ghazvanids and of forming a confederacy for fighting together against the Muslim threat. Mahmud, Sabuk Taijin's son, defeated this alliance in 1008, expanding their kingdom to Lahore, now Pakistan. But by no means Lahore was the end of his campaign. Southern 
he found an even greater picture, how wealthy these Hindu kingdoms were. Mahmud subsequently kept going south, conquering cities and leaving them to be ruled by his Hindu vassals. Nonetheless, the extension of his kingdom did not allow Mahmud to go further. The Ghaznavid dynasty would face its own hard times with the Seljuks Turks coming west. The dynasty would finally perish at the loss of Lahore in 1186. Behind Ghaznavid's defeat was the Ghurid dynasty. The Ghurid had converted from Buddhism to Islam at the beginning of the 12th century. After taking Lahore from them, they moved to northern India against the then ruling Sena dynasty. It would be Ghurid general Muhammad bin Bakhtayar Khalji who would conquer Bengal in 1204. As the former Alp Tejin, Khalji was a Mamluk of Turkish origin. The story tells that he captured West Bengal Nabadvip, the capital of the Hindu Sena dynasty, only backed up by 18 cavalry soldiers. In 1206, with the assassination of the Gurit Emperor, his territory was divided among his generals. Khalji then established his own Mamluk dynasty and his Delhi Sultanate. In its more than three centuries of existence, the Muslim Delhi Sultanate would have five different dynasties, firstly Turkish and later Mongol, and would eventually cover a great deal of India's territory. This is when the lasting development of Islam in Bengal began. Before Islam since ancient history, Buddhism was the main religion in Bengal, as well as Orthodox Hinduism, which was also the religion of the former Sena dynasty. Bengal was not directly affected by the then Buddhist Mongol Empire attack on West Asia, yet it became an escape for refugees of the Mongol imperial horde. These Turkish Muslims often migrated grouping around Sufis, Muslim followers who were seen if not as spiritual leaders, as heads of their communities. This migration also included scholars from other Muslim locations. As a result, South Asia became an important nucleus of Muslim culture. Bengal, most of all, had this fate. Surrounded by mountain ranges, East Bengal was a sort of geographic halting point for migration movements. Buddhist and Hindu monasteries suffered the most of the growth of Islam faith. Most of its monks and Brahmins had to escape to remote parts of Bengal and even the remotest places like the Nepalese mountains. Bengal started its independence process from the Delhi Sultanate in 1338. By then, the Bengal region was divided into three parts, each with its own ruler. The following decades saw the unification of Bengal in the form of the Bengal Sultanate and the siege of its autonomy by the Delhi Sultanate. But Bengal's independence prevailed. Meanwhile, the region gained notoriety for the development of literature and painting, among other liberal arts, but also the Muslim population began to outgrow the rest of the religious groups. This process had its peak in the 16th century. In 1576, the Sultanate of Bengal succumbed to the Muslim Mughal Empire, which in 1610 founded Dhaka as the provincial capital of the empire. Still, the Bengali region remained somewhat independent and went under a great social and economic transformation thanks to the agricultural rush. Since before the 15th century, the Bengal rivers started to suffer a great transformation that ended in the main course of the Ganges connecting to the Padma. This meant two things. Firstly, River communication made possible a greater economic exchange with other regions. Secondly, as the Bengali Delta and its river's flow increased, agriculture exploitation increased greatly. As a result, rice production was so prolific that for the first time, rice became a major exportation product. This natural phenomenon coincided with the Mughal Empire's conquest of Bengal. And it was during this time that the agrarian base of the population took place. Until then, the region was still covered by a great deal of forest, and developing agriculture was at the hands of Muslim religions, who received, along with land grants, the task of clearing the forests for one part, but also of constructing mosques. These mosques acted as central cultural institutions for the local population, as well as for the increasing number of migrants which, as we said earlier, found the delta as a halting point in their migration. 
In this sense, Islam's greatest development in Bengal occurred on pair with its economic development to the extent that the very act of cultivating was and continues to be seen as bearing the transcendence of a religious act. We shall also acknowledge that previously, since the times of the Mamluk Sultanate, Islam in Bengal was mostly a part of urban culture, that is, related to wealthy nobles as well as state members like religious officials, soldiers, and judges who often claimed to be of foreign origin. However, similarly to how Christianity grew in Europe, the development of Islam in Bengal was not a matter of imposing religion to an existing population, but of creating one with it while absorbing the local elements. In this sense, despite Islam's settle in the region as a conqueror's religion, it would finally grow and develop organically in Bangladesh. This was also the case with the massification of paper during the Mughal rule. The implementation of paper as a communication technology meant the move from an oral tradition to the new authority of the written word. Massification of the Quran fuels the regional cultural identity and allowed Islam to be understood not as an alien ideology, but as a part of local culture. By the end of the Mughal Empire rule, Bengal and Afghanistan Afghanistan gathered most of the Muslim population in South Asia. Likewise, with the Indian Independence Act of 1947, the territories of this ex-colony were divided according to the faith of its inhabitants. As such, Pakistan was born as a country that also included the Muslim population on the other side of India now forming Bangladesh, which finally became independent from Pakistan in 1971. Strong, that's amazing. I didn't know that uh, it took 600 years for Islam to reach uh, Bangladesh. And uh, uh, at the end, they were mentioning once uh, the Mughal Empire fell, um, basically the Muslims went to towards Bangladesh and Afghanistan so we have something in common <laughs> and uh, I didn't know that the capital of the Mughal Empire was uh, Dhaka which is amazing because I think the Mughal Empire uh, they were the ones that uh, built the Taj Mahal and I think you guys can correct me if I'm wrong uh, but I thought that that might be the case amazing amazing to see and you know when you look at the map uh, Bangladesh is not too far from Indonesia when they closed in and it was showing those rivers now it shows subhanAllah how there are so many little islands because you can see all those rivers running through it um, and uh, wherever there's ri uh, rivers there's greenery so I'm pretty sure it's it's uh, uh, green too because we saw quite a bit of that in the previous videos uh, if you guys like this video as always please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe if you like me to check out another video please put in the comment section below thank you very much guys for all your love and support uh, I hope you have yourself a wonderful day take care of yourself and your family and inshallah I'll see you in the next window take care